quickly I have a new video for you today but before we get into it don't forget to subscribe if you're a new watcher don't forget to comment down below so we can continue this conversation down in the comments and don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you like this video so, so let's jump into it so I'm back with a new growing up African video I know I haven't been back in a while I really do love this series because it kind of helps me just collect all of how it was growing up African remember things that I wasn't remembering that just they weren't on my mind before so I'm going to be speaking about my experience of how it was to grow up African and go to college and the process kind of before that because it was a lot okay let me throw on my gum because I can't be chewing and talking at the same time I've spoken about this before but I grew up in a pretty strict household it wasn't my parents aren't like the very traditional type of Africans or Ghanians but they they're traditional and then they're they're in the know like you know sometimes how maybe African parents aren't so like hip on what's going on or they just you can like get by and say things and words that they just not like other African parents are ignorant or anything but no like I'm saying there are things that they just don't understand about our culture and our our lingo and all that stuff well those weren't my parents they were pretty hip to anything I was to, to anything and everything and I didn't get away with too much you know they understood the kids of today they sneak off they lie they do all these things I it, it was very hard getting away with things I didn't sneak out I only snuck out on my parents once hopefully they never watch this video <laughs> I snuck out once but other than that I I wasn't really like I don't think I was as bad as they may have thought I was like I feel like they thought I was running the streets or I had the possibility of running the streets and maybe I did have the possibility of running the streets if they weren't as strict but I wasn't doing that and so it was I, I grew up in a pretty strict household, but I, because I feel like they were so in the know of everything, they kind of were a little more lenient towards sleepovers and um, the type of friends or people I had around. They were a little more lenient in that sense. And I feel like sometimes with more traditional African parents, they don't know the, that type of world yet. So they don't want you as out there as you possibly could be. So I am very appreciative for the experiences I had growing up. And I didn't get to go on a sleepover till I was in the fourth grade. Um, and even then, it was like last minute they finally said yes there was even a time <laughs> this is not even about this but there was even a time in seventh grade where I was moving <clears throat> where I was moving to Nebraska the next year and my friends were throwing me a surprise sleepover and they told them and my parents wouldn't even let me go <laughs> and I didn't know about it they were throwing me a surprise like birthday not birthday going away party and sleepover but I just thought I was going to a sleepover but my parents knew that it was the going away and a sleepover and they still weren't trying to let me go like what anyway so yeah that was my experience growing up um We'll definitely get into more stories. I say these stories to not to bash my childhood, not to bash, <clears throat> gosh, not to bash my childhood, not to bash my parents or anything. I definitely had a great experience growing up. Um, there were times that I didn't really like what was going on, but I do see how, don't tell them I said this, that's how some things that they told me no on benefited me later on and um, the things that I was allowed to do were more so beneficial for me and yeah I do see that. I do feel like they could have added a couple more experiences to my roster 
you know, <laughs> just a couple more. That would have been nice. Oh, I don't even know if I said where I'm from. I'm from Ghana, you guys. My parents are Ghanaian, and yes, that is the type of household I was raised in. And I was ready to go to college. Well, my parents were preparing us. I had to start studying probably in the eighth grade, maybe seventh grade, no eighth grade. I feel like when we got to Nebraska, they were like, well, you ain't got nothing else to do, so start studying. And then ninth grade is when I finally got the book and it was SAT, SAT, SAT. And I definitely, I knew from the beginning, no matter how much I study, I'm just not a test person. Not a test person. It wasn't going to go well. And I got the average score. I don't remember what the average score was at that time, but I got it. And I took it two, three more times. My ACT was higher, so that was good. So I was just like, this is the best you're going to get, even though my parents definitely were like, you can do better and I was showing them averages and letting them know no it, usually the first score you get is the highest score you're gonna get and I kept on getting the same score if I keep on getting the same score I'm not gonna do better <laughs> I don't I don't see it I just see this be my average oh well they went with it and I applied to colleges and I got into three and that was great they were happy I was happy I didn't get into the college I wanted to, my number one choice, but I got into, you know, my second, third, and fourth, so that was good. And yeah, and I was ready to go. <laughs> um, I definitely, before even all that, before I went to college, I wanted to go further away. Um, I don't know if it was the fact of living in a, it, it probably was. It was the fact of living in a strict house. So I wanted to get away. I wanted new experiences. And going to the South sounded like a good idea to me. You know, a whole new experience. And I went on the black college tour and I was like, yeah, this is it for me. I went to the, to the Tuskegee uh, homecoming and that was super fun. If you are in, still in high school and you have the opportunity to go to the to a black college tour, I definitely recommend it. it. It is great. You get to learn so much history, see the colleges, see all these black people, um, hopefully go to a homecoming or a game or two. It's really fun. It's an amazing experience, but that's not all what college is about. So it doesn't give you everything, but I was hooked. I was ready. I wanted to go there as well but just because of money and stuff i wasn't oh not allowed but i wasn't able to apply to those schools um just because it would have been the whole out-of-state fee and all that stuff so unfortunately i could not apply to the south um i wanted to go to spellman and clark those were the two schools that i wanted to go to and I couldn't, oh, unfortunately, apply. So that was annoying, but I got into, should I tell you guys? I got into SF State, I got into East Bay, and I got into, I believe it was San Jose State. Yeah, it was either San Jose or San Diego State. I got into those three schools, yeah. And I decided out of the three, I wanted to go to San Francisco State because it was the city life. I wanted to be in the city. East Bay, I felt like I, I got a lot of awards growing up going there. And we went on a lot of field trips. I was like, this is my backyard. I grew up in Fremont. And so I, I didn't want to be that close, you know, even though now my parents, they live they live further an hour away in Tracy. I, I still felt like that was too close. So I was like, okay, I gotta be just, just a little bit further away. So I went to SF State, great. The only, like the, my biggest complaint about it is the weather. I hate the weather. The weather's horrible. As soon as I walked out of my car to go take my pictures for my ID that day, I had a weave in, but my um, my natural hair was out on top, and that <laughs> it 
it, it definitely puffed up and I look like a, what is that, like a little poodle. It, it wasn't cute, it was not cute at all. So I had to figure out how to deal with the, the fog. I had to deal with the fog. I had to learn how to do that. And going back, I was like, nah, I can't, I can't have my natural hair out in this San Francisco weather. So yeah, that's really my biggest complaint. It's cold all the time, um, especially by SF State. If you go further out into the city, it's warmer, definitely like by the bridge going to Oakland it's warmer in that part of San Francisco so yeah but uh, obviously I was living right by state I was living at state so I had to adapt to that weather going to school was one of the best four years of my life um <laughs> Yeah, it was. If you don't know, I was a Becca major, which is a broadcast electronic communications and arts ma major. <laughs> and basically shortened, that's broadcast journalism. And so that's why I wanted to do YouTube. I started YouTube before college and then I dibbled and dabbled. I, I did it one or two times throughout college, but I just wish I was so consistent because I wish I was so consistent because I feel like college was so interesting. You guys would have loved those videos and the videos that I have up right now, they have pretty good views on it. So it, it would have been better if you guys got to experience that part as well, but it's okay. I'm here to explain, you know, some of the things that happen. And if you want to hear more, I can definitely tell more stories, but coming in, I, as a freshman, I did a lot of research because this was the first time I was getting to be outside and on my own without my parents, without my siblings, without my cousins. I was getting to be independent. I've shared a room my whole entire life, never had my own room. And I was coming into my freshman year, I still had to share a room, but it was with one other girl we both are doing our own thing so it was crazy and even going back to my uh, housing is experience I <laughs> I was a go-getter because my parents didn't want me to live in the dorms it's too expensive so I was like okay I'm gonna live off campus and I heard there's off-campus housing so I looked into it I tried to find places to live everywhere was full places fell through so I called the the housing center myself and I I called the housing center myself and I said I need a place <laughs> um, how what are your prices how many people can live there blah blah they told me and they said that they can hold this spot for me for I think 72 hours and then we have to sign the lease and I said bet so I went <laughs> <laughs> and I put an ad up and I said I need four roommates yeah there's three people in the other room and then just me and the other girl in the other room so I said I need four roommates found them all in a day FaceTime them all the next day they seemed pretty decent and then signed the lease was in San Francisco and the next day signed the lease and we were good to go I did that all like the week before we moved in, before we were all supposed to move into college. So I wasn't playing. I was like, if I'm going to be out, I got to start my independence now. And I've always pretty much been independent, even though I, it's always been about like family and stuff, but I've been pretty independent and I've learned to, you know, figure out a situation like that quick. And so coming in, I felt confident being in my own place. But then I was homesick and I didn't understand why. Why was I homesick after wanting to get out so bad? And I went to Tracy maybe like every weekend <laughs> for the for three months or so yeah i was there a lot if i wasn't with my family i was at my best friend's house and 
yeah i just i was so scared i didn't know how to fit in i was i wasn't used to being around i don't know being on a campus this big first of all san francisco state is not big compared to all the other campuses i've been to over those four years san francisco state san francisco state is not that big but it was big because that was the first college campus i was really like reciting on and being on and living on so I thought it was huge and I didn't know what groups to find and I would go into the so I'd go into the plaza and just like there would be the sororities and there would be people handing out flyers and stuff and I just wanted to fit in so I was getting everything and then I saw there was you know um, the sororities and the fraternities the divine nine and they were having a presentation and i was like okay black people i can find black people at this thing and i could possibly join a sorority so i went and it was great and the one that stuck out to me not gonna tell you who but one of them stuck out to me oh did i i feel like i said this in my why i wanted to be an aka video if you want to know go to that video but um yeah they had a an african section in it i was like that's the one i want because I, I was trying to find my identity and all i knew was me being an african kid so i wanted to be a part of that but then eventually i realized they weren't for me and i found another sorority that i saw myself in and that was that was my first experience into it and then i was still scared i was like i don't know where else to see these black people it's a lot of them it was a lot of black people and i was shocked <laughs> i was really shocked and so then there's the BSU and then I went to a couple meetings and not many people were actually going to us. So I was like, where did all these black people that were at the Divine Nine thing, where did they go? Why weren't they in BSU? So then I started to dance and that's usually how I connect. That's how I connect in the seventh grade. I started stepping and then I found my way. In high school too, we, I was a part of a dance group and that's how I found my way. So of course, in college, of course, of course in college I'm gonna find my way through dance. And so um, a couple girls and I, we started a dance group and we started performing at different events at school. Then it went to graduations. Then it went to people's events. We performed at a fashion show. We did a lot. We did a lot of performances. We traveled, we got money. Sometimes we didn't get money. It was all exposure. We had business cards at one point. We were, <laughs> we were a lot, but it was, I found so much community and love in that. And I got to be doing African dancing, which is what I enjoy and love and find comfort in. And so that's how I connected, you know, even the home life and school and made it into something where I, I, I was learning about myself. And I will say throughout the four years of school, I found self-love. I did not know I was black. <laughs> No, I knew I was black, but I didn't know how proud it felt to be black, how proud it felt to be African. And also like just being around, I went to the school that had the first Africana studies department. So definitely it was all about embracing your roots and that for sure I learned a lot about my roots and I embraced it so much more you know those memes when people come back home and they're telling you well this is <laughs> wrong mom and this is whatever that was me i was I, I was that and i wasn't ashamed i was so happy i was learning so much more than what my freaking k through 12 taught me um and i found a community of people that i would laugh with all the time i lived with i lived with my friends eventually because after that that was another story i can give you guys like a, a roommate stories if you want me to those were crazy but <laughs> um 
yeah I found my community I found self-love I found my community I found my and with self-love I embraced my skin color because that was something that I just I I wasn't as appreciative of until I went to college and I don't know exactly what was the turning point but I found it in college. I learned a lot. Um, I'm not going to say that I was an angel going into college. I went a little crazy because when I finally did get comfortable, you know, I was talking to a lot of boys and <laughs> life was interesting. <laughs> we'll just say that life was very interesting. And so... Hi, it's AC from the future. Um, I'm editing and I wanted to just add something else right here. So yes, I learned a lot and I did go a little crazy in college, but I really enjoyed myself. And even though I was enjoying myself, I still was dealing with a little bit of the trauma that I dealt with being at home and growing up in the K through 12 education system in Fremont. And so it was kind of, I had to do a lot of unpacking in college and it didn't solve everything. I'm still unpacking things today, but it allowed me to have the opportunity to start because I didn't know that there was something wrong or there were things that in my mindset that was wrong. And so I had to do a lot of unpacking once I got to college just gonna leave it at that <laughs> but then I also found my way with my sorority I found a great group of friends that I just you know I, I know I'll be friends with forever um, and I also even with that I had I went to Ghana twice during college well one was right after I graduated but still through that I also got to embrace my culture and um, bring back the knowledge that I was learning to that to them and they just it, it was great it, <laughs> I feel like I learned so much about myself during college so you know Growing up being African, it, it, growing up African, gr growing up Ghanaian, it was hard and it was difficult to find my self-identity. I'm not going to lie about that. It was hard because I didn't get to go out much. I didn't get to experience a lot of people and socialize and, and just, I guess, do things more so that I was happy with doing. Like. I felt like if I got got the opportunity to go out, then I just had to hang out with my friends. Um, I didn't get to really like embrace everything else as much as I could. And so when I finally got that independence, I took advantage of it and I'm so happy and thankful with the people that I came in contact with because they taught me so much. Everybody, even the people I don't talk to anymore, everybody taught me so many things about myself. I, I still got the best of both worlds being at in college in San Francisco and just being an hour and a half from my family, I still went home constantly, um, maybe once a month after I got over the home, whole homesick thing once a month or then it went to maybe once every two months and I think by my senior year I only went home maybe twice that year but I still got that the both of the best of both experiences I went home I used to make stew and food and bring it back to school and it was it was good I, I wasn't eating out like a trucker still I I never ate fast food until I got to college and then I went a little crazy in that aspect too so it was a lot of things I was it, I my eyes were open to I will say college was my best four years of life so far but it's not gonna be the only and right now I am still figuring out my life and figuring out my ways but I am still so happy with where my life is going and um, I'm thankful for how I grew up African because it's shaped everything so far 
And yeah, that's my experience. If you have any more questions, if you want to hear more specific stories, comment down below and I will definitely talk about it. All right, you guys. Hope you like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that jazz. Love you guys.